Hey guys, Josh here. Got another review for you, and today we're taking a look at the Joytech Evic VT. Now we're looking at the full kit today, so that does include the matching Ego One Mega Clearizer. The color I've got here is the dazzling white. You've got two other color options: the cool black and the racing yellow. A couple of quick specs for you. This is a 510 connection, so any of your 510 devices will work. In height, we've got uh, about three and a quarter inches. It's about an inch and seven eighths wide and about an inch in depth. So for having a 5,000 milliamp hour battery on the 60 watt device, not bad at all. You do have a micro USB pass through, plenty of venting for your battery, nice easy to read display, and uh, the control knob is pretty handy. I like that. No clicky buttons, it's just got a nice little twist. So you do have three different modes on this. You've got regular canthal mode, you've got nickel mode, and you've got titanium mode. In all three modes, you're able to get up to 60 watts of power. Now in canthal mode, if you're building at 0.25 down to 0.15, the minimum resistance, it is going to limit your power to about 50 to 55 watts. However, if you do build a 0.25 or higher, you'll get the full 60 watts. Now, nickel and titanium modes don't have that restriction, but the way that the power works is a little bit different. So in temperature control mode, you can build down to 0.05. And uh, let's go ahead and have a vape on this uh, Ego 1 Mega. I've got it set at 510 degrees and 50 watts. Good vapor production on that. It's a comfortable lung hit, but it might not necessarily be for you cloud chasers out there. It's definitely going to be more for your flavor fiends. Now I want to go ahead and throw a dripper on there, give you guys an idea of what it's capable of with a dripper. And today I'm dripping R&D Premium Blend Shortcakes. I'm going to go ahead and crank the temperature up to 600. And let's have a vape. Good vapor production on that. Good flavor. And the great thing about temperature control mode is I have yet to get a dry hit. I really like it. Alright guys, so without any further ado, let's go ahead and dive in and get up close. Alright guys, welcome to the up close portion of our review of the Evic VT. It is packaged very nicely. Nice thick cardboard. Got the matching racing stripes. You got the unit itself. We'll set that aside for the moment. A little strap there, that's kind of handy. Get a warranty card for our 90 day warranty. Very handy. Got our Evic user manual. We don't need manuals. Actually, just kidding. Let me grab that. It actually does have quite a bit of handy information in it. Um, you'll need it probably for the initial setup and for figuring out how to get through the menus. Uh, but I've already done that, so I'm just going to set it aside. Got a little separator here. We've got the Ego One Clearizer. Matching paint scheme. That's nice. Got a very nice drip tip, although it is chrome, so it's a bit of a fingerprint magnet like most chrome things. Double O rings, Delrin insulated. Comes with a pre installed nickel coil. The nickel coils are going to be the ones with the blue O rings. The titanium has red O rings. Get that to focus in. 
you'll see it says NI.2 ohms on the side there with the Joytech logo. You have a reasonably wide open draw or bore there rather and what appears to be gold plated center pin. Very nice. So we'll set that aside. Put it all back together. Let's see what else is in the box. We've got our micro USB charge cable. Decent cable. And the goodie bag. So in here we have our full protective sleeve and our titanium coil. Very similar, different colored O-rings, different type of wire. Very nice. Oh, let's clear this out of here. Now here is the the Evic itself. I don't know if the camera is going to capture this, but it's got a really neat pearl white paint job with the nice blue racing stripes. Kind of reminds me of the hood of a muscle car. Kind of like that. Almost Shelby Mustang like. Now we've got our micro USB cord port up here, which is nice, and I'll show you why. When you've got this cord plugged in, With it being up here, it's out of the way of your grip. If it's down here, like some other devices, you're going to have to try and wrap your fingers around it, and that can be kind of annoying. So, that seems like it was well thought out. Alright, so up top, we've got our control knob. Lefty-righty. We've got our stainless steel 510 connection with the spring-loaded center pin. We've got some airflow channels here for those older tanks or other atomizers that take in their air from the bottom. Although we don't see many of those around anymore, it's still nice to have the backwards compatibility. Now the top is chrome. Chrome equals fingerprint magnet. But not too bad. It'll be under your atomizer most of the time anyways, so you'll barely notice it. Now there is a little bit of a rattle to the switch and to the knob, but nothing major. Certainly not in any kind of average use are you going to hear it. And uh, the fingerprints will mostly be covered up by your atomizer anyways, so no big deal there. Although some people may find that uh, annoying. Now we've got our fire button here. We've got our nice large screen here. This is in regular Canthal power mode, so we'll see our wattage setting which we can change by pushing the dial either to the left or to the right that will go down to one watt and it'll go up to 60 all right all the way up it does accelerate a little bit but not so fast that you won't be able to catch it And there's 60. And it does not round robin. Now, to get into some menu settings, three clicks. And you'll notice that the indicator starts flashing. Now, if I press left, First, that will go down to the two different settings that I can change in wattage mode. Now if I go to the battery flashing indicator, you can go over to a puff counter and to a timer. And back around to the battery. Now if I go left again, it'll go up to the wattage mode. And then you can change it to nickel mode or titanium mode. And then you press the fire button to confirm the settings. Now, if I throw a regular Canthal tank on there, uh, such as the Limo 2, has a regular Canthal build in there, 
I'll screw that on and you'll see I didn't press anything but it automatically brings up the resistance and to change the power setting I'll just simply push the knob one way or the other and it does adjust by 0.1 increments now if I press and hold the power button and to the right you'll see key lock now that means I won't be able to change the settings but I can still fire the device now if I do that again to the right and power at the same time key unlock now I can change my settings if I hold power down and to the left we get stealth mode if you can hear that still fires but our screens off and repeat that combination again to turn stealth mode off and we get our screen okay that's pretty straightforward now where it starts to get a little bit involved is when we throw a nickel coil on there all right guys so we're gonna go ahead and fill up this ego one tank we're using the nickel coil and I'm going to fill that with some Premier Vapor Van Custard yes I know another shameless plug so we've got to fill that down the side of the tube we don't want it to go down the chimney we want it to go into the tank like so Screw that back in. So what I'm going to do first, I've got my nickel coil tank here. The Ego One Mega comes with matching color scheme as part of the Evic BT full kit. So I'm going to first go three clicks, and then I'm going to go to the right to nickel mode. Got a fire to lock in nickel mode. I'm going to screw on the tank here. The threading's very nice, no squeaking. And you can see this also fits flush, much like the Limo 2 did. So there's a little bit of wiggle room there. Now, very important, you'll see everything's at room temperature. I haven't fired this, and the resistance comes up as it's supposed to 0.2 ohms. What I want to do, three clicks to get into the menu mode, and then go left left and then right you see the little padlock comes on there that locks in the resistance so now I've got it set at 450 degrees at 35 watts I'll have a vape on it up in FaceTime so you can see how that performs and the same process will be necessary in titanium mode and we're going to go back up to FaceTime and have a vape. Okay, folks, welcome back. Well, I hope you found this review informative. If you have any questions, go ahead and post them in the comments. If you like the video, please click on the like button. And if you want to see more, click on subscribe. We're going to have more reviews coming for you. Have a good one. Oh, my God.